Welcome to another deep dive. Always a pleasure. Today, we're headed to Northern Ireland. Oh, excellent. To explore a spooky legend featured in Love, Ireland. You know that newsletter with all the travel tips and local stories? Yeah, I've seen that. Well, they claim that somebody managed to photograph oh. the gray lady. A gray lady? Yeah, a ghost said to haunt the dark hedges. Ah. Uh back in 2015. Really? After all this time? Apparently, after like 240 years in hiding. Hmm. <laughs> That's a story that definitely captures the imagination. The Grey Lady. Yeah. A ghost. Of, of the dark hedges. It's classic Irish folklore. So can you paint a picture for our listeners? Sure. What exactly are the dark hedges, and why do they seem like the perfect backdrop for a ghost story? Imagine you're driving along this, like, quiet country road. Okay. And suddenly you're surrounded by a tunnel of these ancient beech trees. Wow. They're branches. They kind of intertwine overhead, mm -hmm. you know, creating this really eerie atmospheric effect. I see. That's the dark hedges. Wow. Okay. Planted by the Stuart family way back in the 18th century. Oh, wow. Meant to create a dramatic entrance. I see. To their mansion, Grace Hill House. Oh, cool. Seems they've also become a dramatic entrance oh. to something a little more... Supernatural. Yeah, maybe. You might even recognize the dark hedges from uh, Game of Thrones, actually. Oh, really? They used it as a filming location for the King's Road. Very cool. So we've got this spooky setting. Right. But what about the Grey Lady herself? <laughs> the newsletter claims she was photographed in 2015. Right. Do we know anything about this photo? Like, what does it actually show? That's where things get interesting, but also, like, kind of frustrating. Sure. They mention the photograph, but there are no details, like, at all Oh. about what it shows mm. or where it might be. Interesting. It's like they're teasing us with the possibility of evidence without actually showing us anything. Makes you wonder, right? Like, are they just drumming up interest? Yeah, I mean, wouldn't they have to have seen the photo themselves to mention it? Maybe we could reach out to the Love Ireland people mm. and see if they can give us more information. You know, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. But for now, we're left with this, like, tantalizing mystery. Right. What about the gray lady herself? Yeah. Do we know anything about her? Like, what kind of stories well, are own... usually told about ghosts and Irish folklore? You're right. It's almost like the lack of concrete details makes it even more interesting. Like, the story itself wants to stay mysterious. Right. Exactly. And that's where the whole Irish folklore tradition comes in. Yeah. Ireland is full of these tales of spirits, right? Hmm. Tied to specific locations. Okay. Often, these spirits are connected to tragic events. Okay. For example, there's the Banshee. The Banshee, right. A spirit who's wailing, like, warns of impending death. Wow. Okay. Or the Dullahan. Right. A headless horseman. Okay. Carries his head under his arm, calls out the names of those about to die. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, those are pretty creepy. So, could the Grey Lady yeah. be connected to some specific event in the Dark Hedges? That's possible. Something tragic that might explain why she's still there. It definitely could be. Unfortunately, the history of the Dark Hedges isn't, like, well documented. No. At least not in terms of tragic events that would, like, make a good ghost story, you know? Right, right. There are some local rumors, though. Mm. Like what? About a servant girl, I think. Okay. Who died under mysterious circumstances on the grounds of Grace Hill House. Oh, interesting. The mansion that the Dark Hedges lead to. Right. Some people think she might be the Grey Lady. Ah, okay. So we have a possible origin story. Yeah. For our ghost. Let's go back to that photo for a second. Okay. Let's say it actually exists. Mm. What would make it believable as, you know, proof of a ghost? Is there such a thing as a typical ghost photograph? That's a great question. Think about the most famous ghost photos, right? Yeah. Often, they're blurry. Okay. Indistinct figures. Yeah. Open to interpretation. Yeah. Sometimes you see, like, orbs of light or strange mists. Right. The ambiguity is part of what makes them so intriguing. Right, right. Now, a clear, high-definition wow. photo of a, you know, recognizable person in period clothing, mm. that would be a lot harder to explain away, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would definitely raise some eyebrows. It makes you wonder what kind of photo the Love Ireland newsletter saw, you know? Right. Was it something easy to dismiss, like, you know, a trick of the light or a double exposure? Mm. Or was it something more, uh, I don't know, convincing? Yeah. Maybe even a little creepy. We're left with so many questions. That's what makes this deep dive so fascinating. Yeah. We're piecing together a puzzle with missing pieces. Yeah. Relying on folklore, local rumors, mm. 
and this intriguing, if vague, mention of a photograph. It's like we're on a ghost hunt ourselves. Right. Sifting through clues, trying to figure out what's real and what's not. You know, what I find so interesting is that even without, like, concrete proof, the legend of the Grey Lady adds this whole other dimension to the Dark Hedges. Totally. It transforms them from just a beautiful, you know, row of trees right. into a place full of mystery and intrigue. Yeah. Suddenly you're not just admiring how the branches grow together. You're imagining a ghostly figure, you know, moving between them. Right, like watching you from the shadows. Exactly. And speaking of watching, yeah. that's actually a perfect segue to our next point. The impact of legends like this one on tourism. Oh, interesting. Because, let's face it, the dark hedges have become incredibly popular lately. Yeah, they have. And I can't help but think the gray lady has something to do with it. You're absolutely right. It's like the legend itself has become a tourist attraction. Right. Drawing people in with this promise of a glimpse into the supernatural. It makes you wonder, though, if there's a downside to all this attention. Hmm. I mean, the Dark Hedges are a natural wonder, a historical site. Does all this focus on the ghost story kind of overshadow that? It's a good point. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Between celebrating the folklore, which gives a place its you know unique character, right. and making sure the place itself isn't overwhelmed by like all the hype. Right. The last thing we want is for the dark hedges to become some kind of ghost tourism theme park, you know? Right, right. Where the focus is on the, like, sensationalism rather yeah. than the history yeah. and the natural beauty. Exactly. So how do you find that balance? That's a good question. How do you encourage respectful tourism that appreciates both the legend and the place itself? I think it starts with education. You know, okay. encouraging visitors to learn about the history of the Dart Hedges, mm. the Stewart family who planted them, the connection to Grace Hill House. I see. And along with that, presenting the Grey Lady legend, not just as a spooky story, but as like a real piece of Irish folklore. Okay. Something that reflects the culture and beliefs of the area. So giving context to the legend, putting it within a larger historical and cultural framework. Exactly. Okay. I like that. But how do you actually reach those visitors? Is it through like signs, guided tours, something else? I think it's all of the above. Mm -hmm. Well designed signs can do a lot, you know? Yeah. Provide information about the history and the folklore. Right, right. In a way that's engaging and easy to understand. Local guides yeah. can offer more in-depth tours. Yeah. Weaving together the historical facts, the legends, and their own stories, creating a richer experience. It sounds like it's about creating a more layered experience, one that goes beyond, you know, snapping a quick selfie in front of these spooky trees. You know, it's funny, the Love Ireland newsletter yeah. highlighted a comment from a visitor named Sharon Buffet, and she oh, said, dear. the Irish people are the friendliest people in the world. I saw that. It's yeah. really telling, isn't it? Yeah. Because ultimately, the most memorable travel experiences often come from the people, you know? It's those human interactions that bring a place to life. Exactly. Make it more than just, you know, a backdrop for photos. Right. Sharon's comment reminds us that alongside the history and the legends, there's a vibrant culture, a welcoming community that are just as much a part of the Dark Hedges experience. Couldn't agree more. And that's really what responsible tourism is all about, right? Oh. Engaging with a place in a way that respects its history, mm. its environment, and its people. So connecting with locals, learning about their stories, and supporting, you know, local businesses. Yeah. It's about being a traveler who's, like, mindful. Yeah. Not just someone consuming experiences. Exactly. Yeah. It's about leaving a good impact, mm -hmm. not just a footprint. Yeah. And who knows, maybe with that kind of mindset, yeah. we'll start to see those legendary figures. Yeah, like the Grey Lady. In a different light. Maybe instead of, you know, fearing or trying to exploit those legends, mm -hmm. we'll begin to appreciate them as part of this rich tapestry of human mm -hmm. experience. Stories that connect us to the past mm. and remind us of how powerful our imagination is. What a beautiful thought. Yeah. And maybe by doing that, we can ensure those stories continue to be shared yeah. and cherished for generations to come. That's a great point. Shall we wrap up this deep dive <laughs> in part three? Let's do it. It's really fascinating, you know, how yeah. these local legends, true or not, right. can put a place on the map. Mm. The Dark Hedges have become like a global phenomenon. Yeah. Partly because of Game of Thrones, sure. Right. But also, I think, 
because of this whole gray lady thing. Yeah, I think so too. Adds another layer of intrigue for visitors, you know. Absolutely. It's like people want to experience something yeah. beyond the ordinary. Even if it's just a, you know, a quick feeling or a chill. Right. Like we said before that blurry line between belief and the unexplainable. Yeah. It's powerful. It really taps into that. Like yeah. Basic human need for mystery and wonder. Right, exactly. In a place called the Dark Hedges with a resident ghost. Yeah. Come on. That's irresistible for anyone who likes a good spooky travel experience. Yeah, for sure. But it makes you think, is there a downside to all this attention? Hmm. Interesting question. I mean, the Dark Hedges are a natural wonder. Right. A historical place. Yeah. Does focusing on the ghost story take away from that? That's a valid concern, for sure. Yeah. It's about finding a balance, right? Mm. between celebrating the folklore that gives a place its character right, and ensuring the place itself isn't, like, overrun by all the hype. Yeah, yeah. We don't want the Dark Hedges to become a ghost tourism theme park. No, definitely not. You know what I mean? Right, right, where the focus is on the spectacle right. instead of the history and the natural beauty. Exactly. So how do you strike that balance, then? Mm -hmm. How do you encourage people to be respectful tourists who value both the legend and the place. I think it starts with education. Okay. Encouraging visitors to learn about the history of the Dark Edges, the Stewart family, the link to Grace Hill House. I see. And then present the Grey Lady legend not just as this scary story. Right. But as like a genuine part of Irish folklore. And you know, something that reflects the culture and beliefs of the region. So giving it context yeah. Putting it within a bigger historical and cultural picture. Exactly. I like that. But how do you actually reach these visitors? Mm. Is it signs, guided tours, something else entirely? It's probably a combination of all of those things. Okay. Well-designed signs can be really effective, you know? Yeah. Sharing information about the history and the yeah. folklore right. in a way that's like, engaging and easy to understand. Yeah, it makes sense. And then local guides can offer those deeper dives, you yeah. know, weaving together the historical facts, the legends, even their own personal anecdotes, right. creating a more immersive experience. It's about creating a more layered experience, one that's not just about snapping yeah. a selfie in front of some spooky trees. Exactly. You know, it's funny, the Love Ireland newsletter actually yep. highlighted a comment from a visitor, okay. Sharon Buffet, right. and she said, the Irish people are the friendliest people in the world. <laughs> I saw that. It's mm. really telling, you know. Right. Because ultimately, the best travel memories mm. often come from the connections we make with people. Yeah, absolutely. It's those interactions that make a place feel real. Right. Not just a backdrop for our pictures. Yeah, exactly. Sharon's comment reminds us that beyond the history and legends, mm. There's this vibrant culture, right? a welcoming community that are just as much a part of the Dark Hedges experience. Totally agree. And that's really what responsible tourism boils down to, isn't it? Yeah. Engaging with a place yeah. in a way that's respectful yeah. of its history, its environment, and its people. Connecting with locals, learning about their stories, supporting local businesses. Right. It's about being a mindful traveler, not okay. just someone there to consume experiences. Exactly. It's about leaving a positive impact, mm -hmm. not just a footprint. Yeah. And who knows, maybe if we travel with that mindset, mm. we'll start to see those legendary figures. Yeah. Like the Grey Lady right. in a new light. Yeah, like maybe instead of mm. being afraid of or trying to exploit those legends, right. we'll start to appreciate them yeah. as part of this like rich tapestry of human experience. Exactly. The stories that connect us to the past and remind us how powerful our imaginations are. Beautifully said. And maybe by doing that, yeah. we'll help make sure those stories continue to be told. Right. And valued for generations to come. It's amazing how, like, just a quick mention of the gray lady in a travel newsletter right. led to such a, a, a big conversation. Yeah. We've gone from ghost stories to Irish folklore, the impact of tourism. It's true. And even responsible travel. It's really interesting how connected all those things are. It is, it is. How a single legend can give you insights into like yeah. a place's history, mm -hmm. its culture, even its economy. It really does. Kind of like those choose your own adventure books, right? Oh yeah. You start on one path. Mm -hmm. And it takes you to all these unexpected places. That's a great way to put it. And travel's kind of like that, isn't it?
Yeah, I think so. Embracing the unexpected, mm. being open to new discoveries, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. slowly piecing together a better understanding of the world. Exactly. Love Ireland definitely provided that initial spark, that first step on the path. They did. They did. They've put together these like little bits of information yeah. and inspiration, and okay. they just encourage you to, you know, keep exploring. I'm they right definitely on. inspired us to do a deep dive yeah, they do. into the gray lady and the dark hedges. It's been fun. And what we've learned is the story is much more than just a ghost story. Right. It's about like the power of these folk tales, mm. the appeal of mystery and yeah. how we interact with the places we visit. Couldn't have said it better myself. Mm. And even though we might never know for sure if the gray lady is real, yeah, the effect her story has had is pretty clear. Right. It's brought attention to this beautiful historic location, mm -hmm. sparked conversations and debates. Yeah. And it reminds us that stories, they really have power. It's also a reminder that every place yeah. has its own unique stories, mm. its own layers of history and culture just waiting to be discovered. Right. And that's something we can take with us wherever we go. Right? Absolutely. Whether it's a far off corner of Ireland mm -hmm. or our own hometown. There's always something to discover as long as we're open to it. Exactly. And those discoveries, like we talked about, oh, yeah. are even more meaningful when we connect with the people who live in these places. Right. Hear their stories and learn from their experiences. Like Sharon Buffett's comment. Yeah, exactly. About how welcoming the Irish people are. Yeah. It reminds us that people are at the heart of any travel experience. It's those interactions, those moments of connection mm. that really make a place come alive. Beautifully said. Yeah. So as we wrap up this deep dive, yeah, we want to encourage you to seek out those opportunities for connection. Mm -hmm. Find the local voices, the untold stories, the hidden gems, Yeah. the ones that are off the beaten path. <sighs> Right. Be open to the richness and variety the world has to offer. And remember, the journey doesn't end when the uh, deep dive is over. Mm. It keeps going, fueled by curiosity, yeah. empathy, and stepping outside our comfort zones. Thanks for joining us on this journey to Ireland. Yeah. Exploring the mystery of the Grey Lady hmm. and the power of human connection. Until next time, everyone, keep exploring. Yeah. Keep asking questions mm. and keep those stories alive.